Hey, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome back to another iChurch Sunday experience. At Impact Church, we are here with you no matter how far away you are or how close you are. We are right there with you every step of the way. Before we jump into service, do me a favor, press that share button. Share, whether you're watching on Facebook Live, share, tag your friends, share in a group, share on your page. Just share, 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 share everywhere. If you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor, click like, leave a comment, click subscribe, click the bell. Do all of that clicking so that everybody can know where you're at and that you're you know, committed to joining us each and every Sunday because it's going to be big. We are excited. This is Palm Sunday. I am so grateful and honored to talk about God's power and, and his triumphant entrance into our lives. So we're going to talk about the next piece of this wonderful series called New Tools for the Next Task. We're very excited about that, and we're going to be letting you know what's going to be happening for Resurrection Sunday. Next week is special. It's going to be different, and it's going to feel different. Uh, it's going to be our first time in our sanctuary in over a year. So I'm very excited about that. We'll let you know further about that. Excited about the renovations. Excited about everything. Before we go any further, if you're new, type the word new in the chat. That's N-E-W. And if you're also new, click the link in the chat, fill out a connection card, let us know that you're connected and that you want to stay in contact with us. If you need special prayer, do me a favor, before the prayer, you can type the, the letter P in the chat and then type your prayer out or any such thing in the chat, they will pray with you live. Or if you want to be more discreet, click the link in the chat for a prayer card, fill it out, and they will get back with you. They will email you back, let you know that they prayed with you. Amen. Listen, I'm very excited about what God is about to do in this season. I want to pray with you. Father God, I pray for our brothers and sisters listening all over the world. I pray, God, that as we prepare for this service, that you get our hearts together to worship you because you're deserving of our praise. And as we prepare for the word of God, let us make our hearts ready to receive the word so that it will lead us into our next season, lift us to the next level, and allow us to experience our next victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Back with the word in just a few. Father, you're good. Praise 
yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, I lift my hand to give you glory. Say, I lift my hand to give you praise. Say, I'll praise you, Lord. I lift, my hand I lift my hand to give you glory. I lift my hand to give you praise. Here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship.
on, just open up your mouth before him. Come on, come on, open your mouth before him. Come on, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Come on, just for a few moments, open your mouth to release your worship. Come on, take this next few moments. Receive my worship. Take it all away. Receive my worship, Lord. It all belongs to you. Here it is. Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope you have been blessed thus far. I'm ready to get into the word. Are you ready to learn? Type ready to learn in the chat because I am ready to teach. Before we do, let's make this declaration. This is my Bible, my weapon of choice, and my heart is locked and my spirit is loaded. It makes me a living, breathing, walking, talking, anointed weapon of mass destruction. I shall overcome every obstacle. I will seize every opportunity. I will walk in purpose and arrive at destiny. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a couple of scriptures I want to read. Can't wait to get into them. The Bible says in Job 22, 28, Thou shalt, or thou will also decide and decree a thing, and it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. I want to jump down to verse 21 of, of Proverbs 18. It says, Proverbs 18 to 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences. Verse 1 of Psalm 45 says, My heart overflows with a good theme. Mm. I address my psalm to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a skillful writer. King James Version says, My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. And what I love about that is it, it prompts us to the next part of this series, the final part of this series, new tools for the next task. And I can't wait to preach this. I have a question for you. Are you ready to write your next chapter? Are you ready to write your next chapter? We have talked over this month about different tools for different tasks, whether that was the tools of the sling and the stone or the sword or the rod, what have you. But this week, we get to talk about the tool of the pen. Now, I often heard this saying coming up, the pen is mightier than the sword. Now, we're not going to debate the sword versus the pen, but today we're going to talk about how the, the pen complements the sword. We'll get into that a little bit later. But 
pens are used to, uh, you know, sign off. Your signature is important. And when we sign off with a pen, it makes something legal. Legal documents are, are ratified by the signing of them. When we look at documents such as the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, um, anything like that, when it was ratified, it had to be signed. They had to take a pen and sign off on it because that signature made it legal. Back in the um, older days, on the ancient times, uh, the king would sign his name on a document which made it law, right? It, the, it, the pen was used to execute the plan. Come on. The pen was used to execute the law, the pen was used to execute the proclamation, and the pen was used to execute decrees. I, I'm, I'm telling you that specifically to get you understanding that your pen, your pen helps you to execute the plan. It is, it is, it makes something legal, glory to God. So I get excited when I think about this pen because oftentimes when you sign your name on a contract, the, the, you can read the contract, you can hold the contract, but what executes that contract is you signing it. And you have to sign it with a pen, right? I know nowadays we do go through these electronic signatures, but for the most part, people are still signing their names. Your check is not valid. They will send you your check back if the check is not signed. So funds aren't even released without the pen. Glory to God. Laws aren't changed without the pen or executed without the pen. Monies aren't released without a pen. Oftentimes we have to go to the bank and they would tell you, hey, I want to, even though your name is on there and they see your, your uh, identification at the bank, they still require you. If you're going to take any money out, if you're going to make a withdrawal, you need to sign for it. You have to take a pen and you have to sign for it. Pens are used to write books and pens are used to draw pictures. Come on, you use pens for different things. And God is telling us right now, do you have your pen with you? Because watch this, as long as the pen has the cap on it, it does not benefit you. You have to remove the cap and put the pen to paper. You ever heard that term? Putting the pen to paper. Authors hear that often when they're writing their books and they're writing the prefaces and they're writing their prologues and they're writing chapter one and chapter two and they're writing the whole manuscript, script, manuscript. They're writing it out and they're using their pens to write it out. And as after they finish with it, it is formed, right? It is formed. Now the manuscript is put together and they're writing their next chapter with their pen. So I want to challenge you today, after, after saying all of that, to help you understand why a pen is necessary to execute laws, right, to release funds, right, and to write the next chapter. God tells us in Psalm 45 and 1, David says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. He says, my, my heart holds a good theme, themes are written. My heart holds a good theme, but as, as long as my heart still holds it, it is not out there. It is just something that I can experience. But if I want to bring it to pass, if I want to execute it, if I want to release it, I have to use my pen. Glory to God. Do you get it? So then he says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So when I couple that with Proverbs 18 and 21, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. It lets us know that that tongue, your mouth, your, what you say, it can impact your life greater than anything else. It is words. It is what you decree and what you declare and what you speak over that can change your entire trajectory. I use that term and I don't use it loosely. Trajectory is the angle and it's, it's the angle by which you launch yourself. It is how you're pointed, where you're pointed towards. So God is adjusting your trajectory based on what you say. And can I tell you this? You're exactly where every word that you've spoken has gotten you to, to this point. Every word for good, for bad, has gotten you to the point you're in exactly right now. Everything you've said has, has gotten you here. So whether you're in a good place or a bad place, you have no one to blame by what you have or have not said. See, again, I say this. Sometimes it's based on what we say, and sometimes it's based on what we don't say. Do you know that even in the Garden of Eden, when we look back in the Garden of Eden and we look back into chapter three, and we see 
um, Adam and Eve, and we see what goes on with Adam and Eve, and we see how God spoke to Adam and told Adam, don't eat of the tree of good and bad, right? He tells him all of this stuff. He says that the devil is very subtle. He's very subtle. So when he begins to speak to his wife, the devil begins to write or try to write the next chapter of Adam and Eve's life. What Adam does not do, he does not edit the book. He does not correct the book. He does not say anything. And it's because of what he did not say that they got into the predicament that they were in. He did not confront the enemy with his words. In contrast, when Jesus was in the wilderness and he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, when the enemy came in to attack him and the enemy came in to say things to him, he did not keep his pen closed. He did not keep his pen put away. Jesus began to speak and to begin to refer to scripture and began to say things that, that caused the devil to flee. He showed his resistance through what he was willing to say. So what you say can change where you are. It can change the battle that you're facing. But too many people are quiet for unknown reasons. Some reasons are you've spoken up before and maybe you kept getting shouted down and maybe you didn't feel like your voice was the loudest in the room. But can I tell you, the loudest voice in the room does not always mean the, the strongest voice and it does not always mean the most correct voice. So never let, because of the volume of your voice, stop you from speaking. It is important that you use your voice. It's important that you use your pen. If you're going to go into this next chapter, who are you giving control? I'm going to say this so that the people in the back can hear me. Who are you giving control of your next chapter to? Because somebody is going to write this next chapter that you're walking into. And will you be, you know, a spectator, a reader of your next chapter? Will you be a co-author or will you be the author? Glory to God. What do you say? Because when we learn about God, the first thing we learn about God is not what he did, it's what he said. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Then God moved. Nothing changed. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Light did not come until God called it. It was his words. That's why I love the Bible says this as well. He says uh, that we can call those things which are not as though they were. It is what we write. And so many of us have been either uh, shouted down or we don't think our words have value or we compare our words to what other people say and because of their eloquence and because they use big words because of their much speaking. But the word of God warns us against people who, are, who speak out of vainglorious you know, out of that whole van glory is that they're so vain and they, they want to seek the glory and they, they are known for their much speaking. But we cannot be known for no speaking. The Bible even tells us that mountains can move by what we say. But nothing moves if you don't speak. Our commands are what causes things to happen. If you're a pet owner, you know your simple, simply your voice, what you say can command your animal to obey, your cat, your dog to obey you because they know the tenor and tone of your voice. It is echoed throughout scripture because the Bible says, my sheep knoweth my voice, not my smell, not my look, but my voice and a stranger they will not obey. So even to get things to respond to you requires your voice. Don't let anybody silence you in this season. This should be a season of your voice mattering. There was a TV show called, and it's still on, called The Voice. People are looking for The Voice. But if you are silent, how will they hear your voice? If you have been frustrated into silence, and don't let the enemy frustrate you into a place of silence. Things aren't going your way, so I just won't say anything. No, your voice matters. There is power in your voice. There is power in your tongue. Never let the devil make you feel like your voice does not matter. Well, what does it matter? It's just one voice. What does it matter? No, one voice speaking up at the right time can change the world. We've seen that happen throughout history where different voices speaking at different times. I have a dream. When we hear that echo, something, some of us get chills up our spine hearing that. And when, when we think about that and we're brought back to that point where the, that one statement 
shook and sent shockwaves throughout history. And it's still sending shockwaves when little African-American kids or black kids, whichever is politically correct as they is, grow up in our culture and they echo those words. Come on. And then we echo those words. Yes, we can. It takes you to a place. It encourages you because those words matter. And those words were spoken with conviction. They spoke what they believed. So many times we maybe we don't speak because we don't believe what we're saying. Maybe we grew up in church and we can quote scripture, but we don't believe the scripture that we quote. But God is saying for this next task, don't be afraid to speak by faith. Thou shalt decree, decide and decree a thing. I love that in Job 22, 28. Thou shalt decide and decree a thing and it shall be established for you. Now, no one had it worse than Job. Job lost family, he lost friends, he lost his health, he lost his finances. He lost everything he held true. But God had to remind him, don't lose your voice. Do not lose your voice. As much as you have lost, you can gain it back. You can. Things can change. No matter how bad you have felt, this pandemic has been such a weight on our lives. It has is, it is caused so much tension and trauma. It has completely overwhelmed us. And some, and some of us, even I was speaking to someone the other day, they were telling me, Pastor Knox, listen, even the little things have, have broken my back. It has been the straw that's broken the camel's back. And we don't know how to handle everything. And we're just becoming silent and we're not even talking about it. We're not even discussing it. And we're keeping it bottled in. But nothing will change until you speak. Nothing moves until you speak. You have to decide and decree a thing. Oftentimes we hear that scripture, we hear, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. But I love what the Amplified Version says. It says, you shall decide and decree a thing. No matter how bad your life has been, no matter if you've had the life of Job or not, no matter how downtrodden you might have felt, you might have felt like just giving up, but, but thou shalt dec decide and decree a thing. I love those two things, right? So we have to stop speaking without making decisions. We have to just stop talking off the top of our heads. We have to begin to make decisions, wise decisions. Ask God, God, give me wisdom so I can decide and make a decision on what to say. It's, it's not always just saying things. It's making a decision and then sticking with it and then speaking based on the decision that you make. I decide that I'm not going to be sick. So my speaking is going to be to confront, because my faith is confrontational, to confront sickness where it is. Come on. I am not a doormat. So I'm deciding to stand up. And I speak the word of God. I declare the word of God. My tongue is the pen of a ready and skillful writer. I am writing this season. Though I might have felt like a doormat before, I am above only and not beneath. I am the lender, not the borrower. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me because I am not afraid to speak after making my decision. So I have to make a decision, right? We have to make a decision to trust God. That should be the first decision we make, to trust God, to lean in, to lean into my faith. I decide, I believe, I'm making a decision to speak. Adam did not make the decision to speak. He allowed the enemy to come into his home and confront his wife and to tell his wife a lie. And he did not dispute the lie. I don't know why he didn't do it. Maybe he didn't like confrontation. But if you're going to operate in faith, you cannot be a silent participant in the demise of your household. I just said something. I know chat is going crazy. You cannot be a silent participant in the demise of your household. God is expecting so much more from you. He is expecting so much more from you. He is waiting for you to make a decision. And sometimes what you say out of a decision can just mean yes. My yes to God has opened so many doors for me. It wasn't long drawn out sentences or paragraphs or anything like that or soliloquies. It was sometimes just a yes or just a I will God or just a I do. Those two words changed my life forever. It, it, it brought me to, watch this, the most beautiful woman in the world to me. My beautiful and lovely wife, I know she's in the chat talking right now. She, that's my baby. That's my, that's my love. That's the love of my life. There will never be anyone else that can replace her. And just by saying, I do, and writing my name, come on, on the marriage certificate, it became official. Even if I said, I do, it, it was the writing my name, it was the pen 
that solidified. It was the pen that bound it. It was the pen that bound us together. See, see, come on, come on. And it's the pen that loose, loosens relationships or looses marriages. A pen can bind a marriage and a pen can loose it to divorce. A pen, just a stroke of a pen, your name being written. See, some of you know already where I'm going. That's why the Bible says, God says, listen, he says, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Thou shalt bind and thou shalt lose. If you bind, which is in heaven, you will be bound in earth. If you loose, that which is in heaven is loose in earth. In other words, I will back you up. I will co-sign what you're willing to sign. Come on, somebody. I want to shout. That was so good. I want to pat myself on the back. God is saying that, listen, if you are willing to sign off on this with your mouth, you begin to decree and declare, I will co-sign. Come on, I will make it binding what needs to be bound. I will loosen what needs to be loose. I will release what needs to be released. I'm telling you right now, God wants to put you in a position where you're writing this next chapter with your pen. You better take your pen out and use it. You better de declare and decree over your family that your family, God wants to do something big in your family this year. What is that? The Bible says write the vision and make it plain. What are you writing? What are you writing? or are you writing at all? Are you ready to write? Are you willing to make a decision that I'm changing? First of all, decide God. I, I trust God. I listen to God. Secondly, decide that if I don't like the way things are, I can change them. I can absolutely change them. But I have to decide. I have to believe it in my heart. Because the Bible says out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if I got power in my heart, come on, I got power in my tongue. If I believe it and make the decision in there, I can decree it. If I believe it, I can decree it. I can speak. Come on. Come on, Myron Butler. I can speak into the atmosphere because it's in my heart. And it only got in my heart because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And it only got in my thoughts because if I hear, if I rehearse in my hearing, it dominates my thinking. So I can control what I say by controlling also what I'm hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And if I hear faith-filled words, I speak faith-filled words. And I can change my life. I can change my position. I can change my outcomes because I address my incomes. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established for thy sake. Thou shalt decide and decree. Make the decision to change. Stop making the indecision to stay where you are. That's indecisive. When you stay where you are and you don't move right or left, you're being indecisive. But the Bible tells us, I remember Elijah confronted the, the, the prophets of Baal and he says, you gotta, you gotta, well, how long are you going to be caught between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. You got to follow. You got to make a decision. How long are you going to be caught between two opinions? I love what Joshua says. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Ask for me in my house. I will serve the Lord. You got to choose death or life. Some of you are, you listen, you're living by what you've chosen. You're living by what you've decided. If you decided death, that's why you speak defeat on a regular basis. Those things take root. You're already writing, but you're writing the wrong story. I said it before. You're exactly where your words have gotten you. So you have to change the type of words that you use. You have to make sure that your words are in alignment with the author and finisher of our faith. You have to make sure that when you make this decision to trust God, you make this decision to change things, you, you make the decision. So I decide... And I decree. I shall have what I decree. I decide and I decree. And the Bible says when, when I decree it, because what's bound in heaven is bound in earth, what's loose in heaven is loose in earth, because God is my co-signer and I decree that thing, the Bible says it shall be established for my sake. It establishes things. I told you before, it executes things, it enacts things. It causes money to be released because of what I say, because I want to declare because I want to decree. I decree you're debt free right now. I decree those of you that are willing to receive that are going to be debt free. Debt free is just not going to just drop in your life and drop in your lap. It's going to drop in your spirit. Come on. I want the debt free, that, that mindset to drop in your spirit so that you're making decisions that align you with, with, with a more prosperous 
direction. And when I say prosper, I'm not talking about the, the doctrine of prosperity. I'm talking about God wants to move you in a successful, successful season. And God's going to allow you to make wise decisions. So to be debt free, that means your decisions will have to change. Come on. Your diet of what you're listening to has to change. Come on. Your actions will have to change. But it does not start until you say it. I decide and I decree that my family is going to be blessed this year. That I'm going to lay aside inheritance for my children's children because that's a wise man. I'm deciding it. I'm decreeing it. And it shall be established because God bears witness with me. Come on, when I bind it in earth, it's bound in heaven. When I loosen it in earth, it's loose in heaven. God is co-signing it with me. And his co-signing on what I'm saying, come on, his affirmation or on, on what God has put in my, in my life, what, what he affirms what I say, it's established for me. And the word of God goes on and says, and God's favor is established on me. So that means that God, when God hears me decreeing and declaring, when I decree and declare based upon my alignment with his will, when I decree and declare based on my alignment with his words, when I decree and declare and it's established for my sake, then the favor of God is released. It's established. There is a time, there's an appointment for the things that I decree and declare to come to pass. What God does in the meantime between the time where it comes to pass, the fruition, the manifestation, here's what God does. God pours his favor out on me, right? Pours his favor out on you that now it accompanies you. That doors that used to be locked are going to open for you. People who used to give you a no are going to give you a yes. God's going to create opportunities and create atm the atmosphere for opportunities to flourish in your life. Why? Because you were ready to write it. Are you ready to write it? I need you to say that with me. I'm ready to write. Normally I tell you I'm ready to learn. Today I'm ready to write. What are you writing? Can I challenge you? I, I dare you to start, listen, yes, write it down with a pen and paper, but then you have to learn how to decree it. A decree, watch this, is a document that executes the law or executes the, uh, the declaration, right? A decree, back in the, old, I remember, I just, I remember watching old movies and they would bring a decree out. It would be rolled up in parchment paper. They would unroll the parchment paper and they would read out what the decree says. And because it was signed by the king, come on, the decree was backed by the king, that decree went into effect. Come on, from that moment forward, the moment the decree was read, it went into effect. Come on, some of you that are watching right now, you have not decreed, you have not been decreeing what the king has signed off on. You have not been speaking what the word of God is in your life. Whatever, every, every promise in the word, every covenant that is, is ours in the word of God, you can decree that covenant because it's already been signed by God. And the moment of your reciting or your decreeing the covenant, it gets released upon your family. I, I dare you to trust the covenant of God. And God says, I will make your name great. When he said that to Abraham, he wasn't just talking to Abraham. He was talking to Abraham's seed. And we are Abraham's seed because we have a relationship with Christ Jesus. And because we have been engrafted into this family, we are part of the lineage of Abraham, right? So because we are part of the lineage of Abraham, we are joint heirs with God. And, and I mean, we're heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We receive the covenant. So God will make your name great. When people say you ain't nothing, you respond to them, no, my name is great. Come on. Well, what? Well, your name ain't great. It's not written anywhere. No, no, no. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I speak power. Stop speaking death. Stop writing your obituary. Stop writing your eulogy. Every month you get tired and worn out and you allow the devil to get into your head and you begin to start writing death certificates. The devil is a lie. God is trying to change your trajectory. So you got to decide. Choose you this day, right? Choose. The Bible says, I have said before you death and life. A life and death, blessings and cursings, choose life that you and your descendants may live. I have to choose to speak life. I have to choose to declare life. I have to choose to speak over my family. I have to make those decisions. And when I make those decisions, I'm going to see different results. When I make those decisions, I get to see God operating on my behalf. When I make those decisions, God establishes it. When I make those decisions, the favor of God accompanies what God establishes. God never establishes something that his favor is not there. When God establishes a thing, his favor meets us there. And when his favor meets us there, glory to God, it opens up doors and opportunities and contracts. It opens up scholarships, all of those things that God does for us. It puts us in a position to win. And I want to tell you today, you are in a position 
to win. God wants you to win. You are not going to lose in this season. You're not going to be defeated in this season. You're not going to, come on, you're not. You're just not because you're not going to be silent anymore. It's no longer the silence of the lambs. Come on, y'all. It's no longer the silence of the lambs. The, the silence of the lambs is over. It's time for the lambs, the, the, the sheep, to speak. It's time for us to declare and decree. It's time for us to decide and declare. It's time for us to establish the new chapter, the next chapter in our life. This chapter, the comeback, this is the comeback chapter. Somebody type that in the chat. This is the comeback chapter. Everything that was told from me, everything that I felt disqualified from, everything that I thought I lost, I'm going to recover everything. I'm going to recover the years because the word of God says he will restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm ate up. That people have eaten up your time and people have eaten up your passion and people have eaten up your vision. But God's going to cause them to regurgitate it all and it's coming back to you in this season. Season. It's coming back to you in this season, and God's going to allow you to flourish in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Come on, if you believe that, give God a hand clap and a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I decree and I declare over those that are watching right now, those who have been silent, those who have been speaking death over their lives, they didn't unwillingly and unknowingly, they have been speaking defeat. God, today I decree a course correction. Today I decree and I declare that their eyes shall be open, their ears shall be open. They shall hear what thus says the Lord on today. They shall hear your word clearly, something stirring up in their belly right now in the name of Jesus that's going to cause them to make different decisions. They're going to choose life that them and everything in them, their, their descendants may live. That means every seed that's in them is going to come to life in this season in the name of Jesus. That they, when they start speaking life, they're going to be so elated by the results, glory to God, that, that it's a new chapter in this book of their lives. And I thank you and I stand in agreement with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, I am excited. If, if you're excited, come on, show some emoji love in the chat as we prepare to give people an opportunity to get connected to Christ today. If you're not saved and you, or you have any doubt that you're saved, just say this with me. Dear Lord, I thank you for sending Jesus. As I receive Jesus, he receives me. I am saved. Because your pen wrote it and your heart believed it, you're saved. Type that in the chat. I just got saved. And if you just got saved, click the link in the chat to fill out a connection card and make sure you let us know you got saved and got connected. We're very excited about what God is doing. Um, some of the things that we wanted to execute this month have been put on the back burner because we are working diligent to get up and running. And it's been such a great work. I'm excited about the work that we're doing. We've been meeting with contractors and everything to help uh, give us the bid so we know where we're going. We are preparing ourselves to completely renovate our sanctuary to prepare us for the next season. Amen. And we need all of you to participate and to sacrifice and to support um, as we pr prepare all of this. Amen. I'm, I'm so excited about it. Uh, in order to do that, we need first everybody to commit to 10%, at least 10% of what comes into your home to go back into the church so that there is meat in the house to take care of the business make sure we pay the bills and all of that wonderful stuff and it's a part of our covenant with God it also releases the funds that have held up for us the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just funds get released whenever we operate in the right financial principles tell somebody just type the word release 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 God is about to release I just heard this in the spirit I heard pre-lease it's not a word but I heard it pre-lease which means God's about to do something he's about to release some stuff before it was supposed to get released if you are obedient to the word and trust God at his word, I dare you to connect yourself and commit yourself to supporting the ministry. Now, you can go even further in this season that we're in right now. Renovation is going to require an investment, a hefty investment from us. As my wife and I, we went on and we just got the first 10 chairs. Um, we were the first ones to sew in the first 10 chairs of our new sanctuary. Uh, you can do that so many different ways you can do that. There will be a video included at the end that will go into more detail about it. So we give by several ways. A, you can give 
by texting the gift. You can download the iChurch Anywhere app. You can give with Givelify. You can also give on PayPal as well as Cash App. So many different ways you can give and sow into the ministry. We receive it all. If you want to sow on top of this and you want to give towards the relaunch, relaunch 2021, which is going to be taking place this spring, we do a little bit of a, a prelude to it next Sunday morning for Resurrection Sunday, but we want you to sow and add that in your comments, whether you're sowing on whatever platform, just make sure you let us know it's for the relaunch. Let us know it's for the relaunch. As you're giving your tithes, on top of your tithes, sow that seed. Some of you might be moved to say, I want to buy 100 chairs. I, I want to sow, not buy. I want to sow into 100 chairs. Every chair is $50. Every chair you want to give is $50. So if you want, if you feel led to do 100 chairs, let us know that. You know, tell, you can say in the chat how many chairs you got if you want to, if you feel comfortable doing it. You don't have to. But let people know that you, you're in. If you're in and you're going to support the ministry, just type, I'm in because we've got so much going on. The video will go into even greater depth to let you know what we can do. But next Sunday morning, uh, we will not be having live in-person services for our 7.01 a.m. or our 9.01 a.m. services. We'll have something special for that. But our 11.01 a.m. service is going to be our first live in-person service with social distancing and seating, limited seating. And uh, you can be a part of that particular service by uh, going to the website we are providing for you and sign up through Eventbrite. Let us know you're gonna be joining us on Resurrection Sunday so we can know how to accommodate. Let us know how many people will be coming with you. We're gonna do our best to accommodate you on that Sunday. This is our first Sunday back, so we gotta, we're gonna work out some kinks along the way. And then after Resurrection Sunday, we will be making the announcement on Resurrection Sunday the date that we fully return back to church. And that is going to be completely contingent upon our embracing of the vision and supporting the vision. Excited about it? If you're excited, come on, show some emoji love in the chat. Father, I pray for the seed, the sower, the gift, and the giver. I ask you to multiply some 30, some 60, some 100, some even a thousand fold according to our faith be it unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen. Uh, so much happens during the course of the week. This week, uh, we know we're getting geared up for Resurrection Sunday. On Monday evening, we have the War Room at 6.30 p.m. On Thursday evenings, we have the Recap at 6.30 p.m. Also, uh, Sundays after service or at 12.01 um, p.m., we actually have our Children's Church uh, videos that go up and go live as well. But Sundays after our 9.01 a.m. and 11.01 a.m. service, I do something called Offstage, where I do an open chat and I share with you live, and it's live, you're getting me live. Uh, I'm excited about it. This week, I am going to be doing Offstage on location, so it's gonna look a, feel a little bit differently than it normally feels, as well as you never know what you're gonna get. Again, I wanna shout out the governor of Michigan, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, for being off stage with me last week. You never know, we have some other guests that are gonna be off stage with me coming up, so you never know who you're gonna get off stage. I thank God for you guys. I love you all. God bless you all. And let's live to impact. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Keenan Knox, and I'm so excited to talk to my Impact Church family about Relaunch 2021. Yes, we are going to re-engage in-person service. It's going to be happening this spring. Now, we're going to have a little bit of a taste on Resurrection Sunday but we will not be able to have all of the renovations done so that we can go back to in-person service on a regular basis. One thing I've realized over this past year is that, how can I say it? We went for a long time neglecting our virtual audience. We have people that were watching virtually before the pandemic that we did not minister to at the spirit of excellence that I believe they deserve. So we're gonna have people coming out of this pandemic that are still gonna be worshiping virtually, that aren't gonna be uh, comfortable coming back to in-person worship just yet. And we're gonna have a group of people that want to come to in-person worship. And I've learned that both audiences are just as vocal and deserve the same amount of honor. So moving forward, we are going to have a bifocus on both audiences to minister to their felt needs 
so that they feel no matter how far away they are or how close they are, we are right there with them. In order to accomplish this big goal, because that's what Impact Church does, we do big goals. We paid off our building before time. Amen. We did everything we needed to do as a big, audacious goal. That's what we do. We do big things. Well, in order to accomplish this, there are a few things that we have to change. A, we have to change the sanctuary. Uh, pews are not conducive. They're just not conducive to social distancing. We won't be able to social distance with enough effectiveness as we could if we had chairs. We've been wanting to transition to chairs anyway, so this is an investment in our future. We're making these investments. If we're gonna do the chairs, we have to do carpet and floor and create a new floor plan and do painting and give it a freshness and make it our own church. We want to make it not a place that we inherited anymore, but a place that is ours. We're occupying the territory and we're going to freshen it up. Also, we're going to switch out some lighting. We have to make it better lit. The sanctuary needs better lighting. We have the trusses that are up there. We're installing another truss and additional lighting to brighten the stage up to bring focus to it. And also, we're going to be flying our speakers so that the sound is going to be a lot more balanced in the building. So those are some things for in-person worship that you'll notice. For virtual worship, we're going to be upgrading our cameras and switchers. And again, the lighting is going to make a difference with this. We're looking to invest in a video wall so that we can do things um, that are in concert with the vision of this ministry. We are a very creative church and always been a very creative church. And technology will allow us to be that much more creative. So some of these goals are going to be done in steps, but in order to get back to full worship sometime this year, hopefully, where we are fully engaged and still having full worship virtually, it is going to require us to make those investments and in making investments in things like our cameras, because we're going to need new cameras. Um, honestly, we are so far behind when it comes to cameras. We're going to need new cameras in order to make sure that not just the Sunday morning content that goes out, but throughout the week. We're, we're expanding our children's ministry, our teen ministry, but it's going to require technology because that's where the people are. And we want to go where the people are. Jesus says, go out into all the world to make disciples. Well, with all that being said, and, and I know you want to know what is your part. You can help to really equip the ministry. You can help to make sure there's meat in God's house by making sacrifices along with us. You know, we're asking our leaders and we're asking the Bible says too much is given, much is required. God has allowed us to be given some things that we can in turn invest in the house of God so that we can see thousands of souls come to Christ, whether they're in the building or outside of the building. How many of you are with us on this? If you are, please leave a comment on our uh, any of our social media and, and keep us encouraged and let us know that you're there with us. Also, you can download the iChurch Anywhere app. You can give on all of the platforms that we provide, whether that's Givelify, Cash App, or PayPal all of the different platforms, we need you. Yes, you watching right now, we need you to participate. You say, Pastor, how can I participate? You can participate because we have uh, highlighted about 750 chairs will be needed in order to fully furnish our sanctuary. And we have gotten the numbers. The numbers are approximately $50 per chair. So. You might be able to say, hey, pastor, I can do 10 chairs, $500. I can sell that. Or I can do 100 chairs at $5,000. I can, I can do that. Or pastor, I can do two chairs for $100 or one chair for $50. Everybody can participate in raising the money for the chairs as well as the other things. I will include a list of an approximated list of things that we're gonna require for this. It's a big audacious goal, but you're talking to the church that in 45 days raised $100,000. Come on, we can do much more to invest in our building in this season to ensure a robust 
entrance into our relaunch. You know, over the last year, we have not required any additional uh, capital funding. I have not asked you for anything. I, we have not pushed it or pressed it. But there are some times where we have to press in and deliver. Amen. We have been a church giving back to our community. We have made sure that our staff is taken care of and all of that during this pandemic. Now it's time for us to come back home and do what is required of us to do. So you can make those investments. You can do what you can. And I would love for you to tell us, if you want to say it in the comments, you don't have to. If you want to say in the comments, you know, Pastor, I got 100 chairs. I can do 100 chairs. I can do 50 chairs, Pastor. I can do, you know, whatever you can do, do it at the level of your influence. Amen. Again, some of the things we're going to be doing in order to get back into regular service, we must paint. We must change the carpet and the flooring. We must change out the pews for the seats. Those are things that must happen. We must have new cameras because we cannot have great in-person service and then our virtual service is not at the same level. So I'm, I know I've talked for a lot more than I intended to, but I wanted to give you kind of a scope of the vision of where we're going. This is the roadmap to where we're going. So I'm going to include in this um, a picture, a diagram of what you can do. So if you can do that, whether you do it on any of our giving platforms or not, um, it'll be greatly appreciated. I love you all. God bless you. And hopefully we'll be together soon. Impact Church will be streaming services Sunday morning at 11.01. Just log on for the full worship experience, the preached word, even children's church. You can follow us on YouTube or Facebook Live at iChurchDetroit.